for all the extra functionality that external frameworks can add, sometimes they're just not worth the trouble when you're confronted with hundreds of errors caused by their implementation. The reason these errors are so common is because usually the frameworks developers aren't using the same settings in their project that you are. And the only way that you can set up a pre-existing um, framework with those settings is by going through tons of complicated and confusing things where you're likely just to basically break the framework. So it's not really worth it. But there is a much simpler solution. It's called Cocoa Pods. Most of the frameworks that you're ever going to want or ever going to use are on Cocoa Pods and they can be added in literally five minutes. To install Cocoa Pods, open terminal and type in sudo gem install Cocoa Pods and click enter. You'll be asked to put in the password for your computer now. At this stage you have to wait a couple of minutes while it downloads Cocoa Pods and installs it on your computer. While it's doing this, don't touch anything. So you now have Cocoa Pods installed. As you can see, depending on what you've installed for on your computer, you might end up with a whole heap of other things installed at the same time, or you might just install one small thing. Now the next thing to do after you've installed Cocoa Pods is actually use it and enable it in one of your projects. So let's create a new Xcode project just to use as an example to show you how. Pick whatever type of application you like, I'm going to call it Pods Example. As you can see, I just put mine on the desktop because it's an easy place to put it. So you, now you need to close Xcode because you can't actually have Xcode open because Cocoa Pods is going to be making some modifications to it. So close Xcode and quit it. So now you need to enable Cocoa Pods on that project. You're going to need to use a command called CD and you're going to want to CD into the directory of your project. You can see I'm already in my home directory of my account. So from here I'm going to want to go desktop slash cocoa pods example, which is of course that name of that file. Click on there, and as you can see, it takes me into that file. So basically terminal is running within that file now. Next thing you want to do is create a cocoa pods well file in the file. This Cocoa Pods configuration file that's in your project is called the Pods file. It's, they're really original. You just want to go nano, which is like a terminal text editor, pod file, which is of course creating a pod file. You have a brand new file. The first thing you need in this file is your platform, the platform that your app is going to be running on or is going to be built to. This you want to type platform, a whatever those things are called. IOS, comma, brackets, and in brackets you want to go 8.0. That means that our project is going to be any version of iOS 8 from iOS 8.0.0 up. So that's just that little bit of boilerplate. Now you actually want to add your pods. For an example, I'm going to use AF networking because that's one of the standard pods that a lot of people use. And so to add a pod, you simply want to type pod. Then in brackets, the name of your pod, so AF networking, and that's it. You can add a pod just like that. If you want to specify a particular version of your pod, if you look over here in the um, pods website, you can just add a comma, and then in brackets, add that to the specific version of your pods file of that pod that you want to add. Now, of course, we can just add whatever version of AF networking we want. So that looks good, that's that's all we need. To get out of Nano, you have to go Control and then the X button. I'll ask you whether you want to save. You want to go Y, yes, and just click Enter. So there you go. If we look in our folder here, we have a pods file. The last thing we want to do to get Cocoa Pods to set up our project is run this command. Pod install. We want to run that in that file. It's going to do some things. And again, like installing the um, the gem before, this is going to the amount of time this is going to take is going to depend on your internet. Okay, so our pod are uh, set up on our project. We go back to our folder. And as you can see, it's added this stuff. We don't need to worry about that. It's also added this folder. We don't need to worry about any of that. We just need to worry about these two. That's 
Now, this is the Xcode project file that was originally set up when we created our project. You now have to ignore it and instead open this second file that Cocoa Pods created. So, double click on that and it will reopen Xcode. So, as you can see, we have two dependencies here. We have our pods and we have our original project. Now, one last thing. You want to make your pods accessible from your code that you're going to be writing up here in your project. Now, because most pods are written in, of course, Objective-C, you're going to have to create a linking header. To create a linking header, you have to create a, object, a C file. So, go New, File, and you want to make it uh, click next you can type whatever create and when this comes up would you like to configure an objective C bridging header yes you do because that's what you actually want to make um, these two files you can actually just delete them because we didn't actually need them we just needed to prompt that header creation and there's the file we actually wanted we wanted this objective C header so the last thing we need to do to make our framework accessible from our uh, Swift code is hash import and then that name there. So a f net dot h and that of course has to be in brackets. And our framework pod accessible from our Swift code. That's how easy it is and it's an incredibly powerful way to add frameworks to your project. It's far better than just dragging the files in your project.